Hello, polyglots and peacemakers. My name is TB Skine, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3, where we have ended the Geth Quarian War. We good for us. And now it is time that we go and probably save some other doomed civilization from the very brink of devastation. That does seem to be what we do. But first, I need to annoy my editor by spending some time messing around on the galaxy map. Okay. Good. Now, next destination then must be the Citadel to go and turn in all of the things we found and talk to the Asari Counselor. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground tramp? I'll handle it. Yes, Commander. Okay. Excuse me. I'm Commander Shepard. If you promise to be careful, I've got something for you. A Reaper code fragment? Yes, I can use this to try to predict their strategic processes. We might be able to save a few worlds with this, Commander. Thank you. I recovered the code of the Ancients from Dakuna. It's waiting for you in Bay D-24. about shield capacitors. I read about them. Did you say you sold your car a few weeks ago? Because that's around the time I got sent this new armor. Hey, hey, it's late, and I'm not letting my friend miss a night of purgatory, right? You want to go in, or do you want to talk about my car some more? No, you're right. Let's go in, and I'm buying you some goddamn drinks. Okay, the Alliance wasn't good for business before, but this is war. They're dying for us. I'm not stealing medicine from them. Your patriotism is touching. My planet's on fire, asshole. Tell your friend in customs every goddamn package of medicine. Y'all better see where it is. Or maybe CSA needs to know where their last gunship went. Fine. I'll pass on the word. I think you should finish your drink. Yeah. See, patriotism is good. It's good when civilians sell their assets in order to uh, make the fighting forces more efficient. And it's good when, like, criminals decide that, oh, no, we can't do crime anymore uh, because of because of, uh, because of of patriotism. The underlying idea that the game has that... And this is another thing that I, I sometimes find a bit insidious, but this, uh, this idea that in order for humanity to stand united and remember aliens in science fiction are always coded humans. Like, they're, they're essentially always some reflection of humanity. The only way for, for like, the various diverse peoples and cultures of the world to stand united is to have a common enemy to unite against, which is, like, that's not unique to Mass Effect 3 at all, but it's one of those, it's one of those arguments that I have always found kind of kind of insidious because it sort of implies that there can be no united civilization like there, there can be no united community of peoples without warfare right that warfare is key to the coherency of our species that an outside enemy is necessary for us to even function as a society which is quite explicitly a fascist idea excuse me i recovered the rings of a loon they're waiting in bay d24 that's wonderful. Thank you. My people will treat this miraculous find as a call to support their local hospitals. So you went back to the farm. We snuck down the hill. We were hungry, filthy. They turned the towel into a kind of tunic. They would cleaned up the bodies to make more husks, I figured. But there were still farmers alive. They were being held prisoner. And Neyra was there directing the other forces. I could see her. I, I got within 10 meters of her. I just had my gun. What happened next? I got to the prisoners. The farm girl unlocked their restraints, and that's when they all started screaming. I came across this treatment plant at a chemical plant. Could it help? Treatment? What is... 
I've never seen this kind of process before. Huh. Probably experimental. It's a long shot, but let's run some tests and see if it might work for our patient. I pulled this from a Geth jamming tower. Maybe you can use it. How the hell did you use it? Never mind. Tech like this? I don't care where it came from. I'll have my people run with this. If the war comes back here, maybe we can save more lives. I've recovered the obelisk of Karza. It's waiting for you in Bay D-24. You have? It's amazing! Thank you, Commander. That's going to help immeasurably with some very sensitive work. What? Stabilized? Really? Of course. We can have ships at the colony in 36 hours. Do you need medical support? No. Evacuating the colony is more than enough. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador? I'm coordinating actions for the fleet while we're here. Evacuating colonies, bolstering Turian defense lines. Huh. I think it was right here. Three years ago to the day. What? This was where Saren's assassins fired at me. I'd just gotten to the Citadel. I didn't think I needed my barriers up. My mistake. You never told me about this. How bad was it? Got me in the arm. They used polonium rounds. I was running a fever in minutes. It was the first time I'd been really hurt on my pilgrimage. I ran to the Council Embassy, asked for protection, offered the data on Seren. The Turian clerk called me Soot Rat. He threatened to have me tossed off the station if I didn't leave. I wish that clerk could see you now. He just did. That was him back there. I don't think he remembers me. Maybe we should go have a little talk with that clerk. <laughs> I spent three years waiting to come back and make his life hell. But when I finally saw him, he was just a clerk whose people desperately need help. Which they'll get, thanks to you. Nice work, Ambassador. This war is more important than grudges and prejudice. Maybe he and I both needed to grow up a little. The difference is that you helped when it counted. Thanks, Shepard. So did you. Yeah, war makes people grow up. Everything looks so peaceful. In here, you can almost forget about the war. Ah, uh, uh mm, well, sorta, kinda. A lot of shattered glass and people with guns around. But you get what I mean, right? Like this, this sort of pervasive attitude that, yeah, you know, war is terrible, bad, lots of people dying. That's 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 awful. But on the other hand, also. It makes everyone grow up and be their best selves. Isn't that nice? Like, it's almost like war is good, kind of, and uh, healthy for societies to have them a lot. Because if you have a war, then everyone, like, makes makes men out of boys, and people grow up, and they and they abandon their petty whatevers, ah. Actually, I found a Cacliosaurus skull preserved in amber. Maybe you could clone it, or... You're kidding? You're kidding. Seriously? Well, um, if, if the genetic material is intact, we could... Hmm, we've got cloning facilities on Sirkesh. Cacleus regimes were remarkably pliable. Cloning might be effective. I want all remaining files secured and marked for Tentron clearance only. Commander Shepard, thank you for coming. Did you find something? The Council has ordered a full review into Donald Udina's activities. We're still piecing together his coup attempt. But that isn't why I asked you here. The situation is growing urgent for my people. We're aware your Crucible is still missing a key component. The Catalyst. Do you know something? Not exactly, but there is an artifact on our homeworld, Thessia known only to highest levels of my government. What is it? With any luck, it's a means to help you locate the catalyst. The artifact is kept in a temple located at these coordinates. I've ordered a scientific team to meet you there. If this artifact is so important, why keep it hidden? Every species in the Citadel has its secrets, Commander. But this one, in the wrong hands, would upset the balance of galactic So power. we kept it for ourselves. The Reapers are doing that right now. Which is why I'm bringing this to you. 
I appreciate the help. It's you who will be helping us. The Matriarchs are growing desperate. For the first time in our history, Thessia is vulnerable. For all our intellect, we're outmatched by Reaper firepower. I'll do what I can. Whether you know it or not, you've become the sole ray of hope in a very dark night. Goddess be with you. Well, if it's an Asari colony, let's bring Liara along, and since we're going to be fighting Reapers... Dig up any information on the mission, Liara? I did, and I now understand why High Command wanted to hide it. We're headed to an Ardat Yakshi monastery. Ardat Yakshi? Like Morinth? Morinth chose to be a killer. These Ardat Yakshi isolated themselves to avoid that. But it doesn't mean they're harmless. Their urge to feed can be powerful. That's why High Command sent in commandos to investigate the monastery's distress signal. So the Asari throw us at the problem? What's the plan? If there was a chance the Ardat Yakshi could break loose, the commandos were to purge the monastery. Purge? You mean destroy? They would have brought heavy explosives with them, yes. Oh man, I should have brought Garrus! No! Right, I forgot, I forgot this is the... Oh man, oh well. Oh well. Morinth was dangerous, but are the Ardat Yakshi this big of a threat? Morinth was just hitting her stride. Ardat Yakshi who kill leave behind astronomical body counts. It's why they can never be free, and why they're such a great source of shame to the Asari. That's why High Command won't rest until this place is destroyed. They'd never risk a single Ardat Yakshi getting loose. Don't assume anything. Maybe the Ardat Yakshi sent out the distress call. If the Asari want us to destroy this place, I need to know what happened. Agreed. Once we give a report to High Command, they'll stop wasting lives here. Shuttle. Still warm. Elevator disabled. To prevent entry or escape, I wonder. I'm sure it's fine. Sounds close. Oh, by the way, here's another one of those little things. Yeah. Uh, there's banshees in here, in case you couldn't tell. Another thing. You see, like the the warning labels on this on on the doors, like that sort of industrial, like with the stickers that they put on that have various warning signs telling people like health and safety information. What a human thing to do! What was that? Stay sharp. This was the Commando's captain. It seems they gave their lives fighting the Reapers. This monastery's out of the way. What do the Reapers want with Ardat Yakshi? Anything useful? A map, showing the nav point and location of a bomb. Some room called the Great Hall. So the Commandos started the purge after all. Ardat Yakshi or not, evacuating this place would have saved a lot of lives. If there's no survivors, let's get to the Great Hall and set off that bomb. You know, if not for all the warfare, this would be kind of a nice place.
Very good. I almost didn't hear you. Samara? It has been some time, Shepard. You are a most welcome sight. The corruption here runs deep. I assume you're here on your own, Justicar. Perhaps for something special? You are correct. Two of my daughters live here, and I have come for them. Unfortunately, the Reapers had already infested this place by the time I arrived. It's good to see her again. Her eyes are so fucking big. You met me hunting down your other Ardat Yakshi daughter. Are these ones just as dangerous? Faler and Rila have followed the monastery's rules ever since they arrived. They've shown no inclination toward violence. And you're here to save them? They are my responsibility. And it's one that cannot be abandoned, even as our galaxy crumbles. Let's go together. Maybe your daughters can tell us why the Reapers hit this place. I suspect they will have much to tell us. It has been centuries since I last saw them. We're out of time. We'll meet again. I will draw these creatures off. Wait! Let's go. Samara is bad with waiting. Hello, you're very dead. Can I have your things? We need them on our side. Well, the Sari Command owes us big time for this. Agreed. Yeah, here they come. Liara, why? That used to be a person. An Asari. What have the Reapers done? As soon as I was able. Shepard, this is Faler, my youngest. She and her sister Rila are Ardat Yakshi. They have been... Mother! They have Rila! What? I saw some of those creatures take her into the Great Hall. I've been trying to get there. What are the Reapers doing here? Harvesting us. They're turning us into... into those... monsters. Those monsters that still have immaculate asses. Please, you can't let that happen to Rila. It's so fucking... Like, no, yeah, like the, yeah. Horrible monstrosities transformed by evil technology from beyond the stars, but they do be cheeked up, though. <laughs> the Asari thought the Ardat Yakshi were to blame for the attack. This is our home. Most of us are grateful to be here. The monastery is a place Ardat Yakshi can achieve peace. Valer speaks truthfully, Shepard. I vouch for her words with pride. Then we have to find Rila fast. The Great Hall has a bomb in it. A bomb? But didn't you come to rescue people? We'll try, but we can't leave this place standing, Valer. You sound like the commandos. They didn't stop to help anyone. Valer? 
I'm sorry. No, you have pretty good reason to be upset. Honestly, they came to kill you. The Great Hall. She's looking for Rila. It's like... She's not wrong. We'll meet you there. Please be swift. <laughs> but no, yeah, just... <laughs> fucking hell. Like, honestly. Honestly. Jethro, this is Galay. I've blocked extranet access. We don't need the students panicking about these Reaper rumors. Still, it will not hurt to tally our supplies. Please bring me an inventory before evening prayer. I'll contact Cecilia later tonight to inquire what set the Asari to war. Go in peace. Rumors. Need a crowbar to pry those doors open. This place was beautiful before the Reapers came. Oh, hello. How did I miss that? That was really bad. Jethra, I have the new girl put in the holding chamber. The Justicar who brought her to us, Justica Fora, said she had trouble convincing the prisoner coming to the monastery was necessary. This may explain why the girl lashed out at her guards. She's lucky Fora wasn't there for that. The Justicar's code would have demanded an execution. I'll question some other Justicars on the level of coercion Fora is permitted to use by the code. This isn't the first time her captures have arrived here terrified out of their wits. But it certainly will be the last Matriarch Gele. Jethra, I looked over this year's candidates for supervised visits into Thessia. I'm approving everyone but Yanis. She's impulsive, cunning, and worst of all, a romantic. Find me a worse combination to let outside our walls. I find it suspicious he was even nominated. Let's look into that and pray it's not Yanis manipulating another infatuation. It takes a great deal of time and effort to persuade Te Thessia's government to let our best students visit their home, home world. Unless Yanis matures, she won't be among them. Banshee time? Or is it just more normal forces? Oh no, there's a Banshee! Hi! No, please get away from me. Non-ideal. Hi. Well, that sucked. Yeah, like, for example, the cumulative trauma of all that fighting. <laughs> Time for a boss fight. Probably. There's the bomb. And Falaire. Rila. Rila, wake up. Falaire. Rila cannot hear us. Look, she's still alive. I know, but I am afraid Rila is not well. Rila's not one of them yet. She can't be. Wake up! Well, that's not great. Rila? Uh, Rila, can you hear me? Why 
did she do that? Because they've begun to turn her into one of the Reaper's creatures. I'm sorry. Can we set off that bomb? We need a detonator. Commandos would have had one. We gotta find it. Later. Okay, now there's two banshees. Cool, 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 ultra cool. Just so, so truly very cool. Slaves. There wasn't even time to say goodbye. Few can break the Reaper's hold. Rila's will was extraordinary, as was her love for you. We left her to die. Rila made her choice, and it has reminded me of what is truly important. Why I swore I'd lay down my life. What is that? Valer, the code demands an Ardat Yakshi cannot live outside a monastery that no longer exists. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Shepard. By the Justicar's code, there is only one way to save Valer. Mother, no! My daughters, you were all so... Let go. What are you doing? Fulfilling the code. By throwing your life away? 
I won't kill my last daughter. You won't have to. Valer? I'll stay here. Home. No matter what's become of it. Without a proper monastery, I could have left any time. I don't need a building to honor my own code. And if the Reapers return, they won't take me alive. I promise. Then, the code permits you to stay, as you are. Once this war is over, and if I am able, I will visit, as a Justicar should. I'd understand if you wanted to help Valer rebuild a home here. It must wait, now that I can help oppose the Reapers. I'll speak with Valer, then join your forces. If you'll have me, of course. I'd be honored. The honor is mine, my friend. Everything's taken care of down here. Bring in the shuttle. Right, Commander. I'll just follow the smoke. <laughs> yeah. I read your report, Commander. We had no idea the situation had deteriorated so quickly. That's why I set off the bomb. May the Ardat Yakshi find rest. What the Reapers did to them was monstrous. I had another team of commandos headed to the monastery who I can now formally transfer to Admiral Hackett's command. They'll serve you loyally, Commander. Farewell. I don't remember if I talked much about it in the previous in Mass Effect, the Mass Effect 2 playthrough, but it is like again, the Ardad Yakshi as a whole are kind of a lot like the character design of the Banshees, right? In the sense of monstrously terrifying evil thing that the game invents, which it then is like, yeah, but also like perfect ass, but also like hot, also like yeah, you know, also like like where it's sort of it ties into what we've talked about before with how the how the Asari essentially are the sex aliens in the Mass Effect world. Like they're the they're the aliens who have sex with everyone and like reproduce with everyone. They're, they're sort of they're sort of very conceptualized as the sexy horny aliens. The same as you'd see on a Star Trek show. You know, there's always the the one race of sexy horny aliens who want to fuck. And they are sort of the universal sex pot aliens. And then the Ardad Yakshi are sort of like, but what if ooh, what if, what if, what if? What if having sex with one of the sexy sex aliens that what if what if it killed you? Ooh, like, ah. The trouble is what is the real world cognate? Like, what is what is a real world example of something where if you have sex with someone, it might kill you? Well, that would be a sexually transmitted disease. Most famously, it would be HIV AIDS. Nowadays, fortunately, isn't the death sentence anymore. With the proper medication, you can have a perfectly normal lifespan. We have learned to manage that virus remarkably well and slow progress is being made towards curing it. But aliens in sci-fi like this are always reflections of the real world to some extent or another. And the Artad Yakshi, it's hard not to see them as a metaphor for that, <laughs> like for the metaphor of the idea of sex. Like it's hard not to see them as Puritan, as a dire warning against, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be too eager to have sex and pursue pleasure because, oh, evil consequences and bad things. It is a little hashtag problematic to have like sort of the, the closest in-universe analog for people who have a serious STD also like, yeah, but it also turns them into incredibly horny serial killers who want to murder as many people as possible by fucking them. Which is like, oh, okay, hmm, oh. like, because that ties back to the, again, fears over HIV AIDS. I think back to the rhetoric of the HIV AIDS pandemic. Back when there were politicians and, and, and media personalities who earnestly made it the thing of like, well, HIV AIDS is a gay disease. And it's proof that gay people are dangerous because they're gonna want to seduce you and fuck you and give you the gay disease so you die. Like that was literally, that sounds cartoonish, but that's, that that was part of the rhetoric back then is that these these promiscuous, dangerous homosexuals, some of whom will dress up like women and pretend like they're women because transphobia and homophobia are deeply intimately connected things. Um, 
And it's like, oh boy. Ugh. And th and you can see them in Mass Effect 3, they sort of try to balance it out. It's like, well, no, but some of the art actually aren't crazy, horny, serial killer sex machines. Some of them are really like, they're good and flair. Look, she's honorable. She's like, ah, I will, I I have a code of honor and I don't, I don't fuck people to kill them. In fact, I don't fuck anyone at all because the only moral thing to do when you are a gay person, I guess, is to not have sex with anyone because because celibacy and, and religious puritanism is the only cure for... Like, again, it's the optics of, like, the imagery they chose was one of, like, well, if you are infected with this terrible sex killer disease, then you must sequester yourself away in religious contemplation and austerity and puritanism to, to, to control your terrible disease and not become a menace to the wider world and then then we're happy to suffer that you are allowed to still exist uh, <laughs> i don't think it's intentional i really don't think it's it, the mass effect writers had that in mind when they did this but glad you talked to mara down i never thought i'd see her flinch from her duty i don't know on one hand that codes all she's had to live by for god centuries and the galaxy goes to hell the old rules don't cut it anymore? I mean, we're cutting some corners, right? A few. Well, the Alliance can always court-martial us after we save the galaxy. What are you doing, Edie? Monitoring reports of proton storms and other space weather. With the Reapers attacking the comm buoy systems, critical warnings may be lost. How bad are these storms? If we are warned, not bad. If we are not warned, very bad. Thanks for the info, Edie. <laughs> hey, Commander. I dug out. You sure make some unusual friends, Shepard. Didn't mean to do that. That is not a side of these sorry I ever want to see. Everybody was fighting the Rachni, trying to push them back through the relay. Finally, the Krogan were turned loose and stopped them. I see. But when the Krogan rebelled. We had to deploy the genophage to stop them. Wasn't the only rebellion. A thousand years later, the Geth revolted against the Quarians. That was a whole other war. Then along came the humans. My own people tangled with them for a while, and now, to top it all off, we've got the Reapers. What about you? The Ouroboros fought the Densorin. The Andoromai conquered the Vandomar, and the Jatil turned against the Jah. So... I guess nobody really ever gets their act together. The Sinriel claimed to have found the path to eternal peace. What happened? The Ditika preferred war and wiped them out. I hope you guys had alcohol. Some of the crew seem shocked by the monstrosities we have encountered. They haven't seen what the Reapers could corrupt after a hundred years. That was our war. Every battle conjured a new nightmare. This human holds such childish views of war. Your species has much to learn. Commander. This poor kid just listening to these two aliens. Oh, Lord. Samara's the kind of soldier we need in this war. Nothing gets in her way. I just hope I'm not in her way someday. That woman means business. Now it's a mutated Asari. The Reapers are just a giant nightmare factory that never ends. I can only imagine what the Reapers are doing to the Drell. Or the Hanar. Or the Vorcha. This could get a lot worse before it gets better. It's a brilliant tactic, when you think about it. But it's evil. When has that ever mattered in war? Yeah, but converting other life forms into Reapers? I, I can't wrap my head around that. Makes sense to me. It ensures you never run out of cannon fodder, eliminates any local resistance, and for every soldier you add, your enemy loses two, the one you converted, and his buddy on the other side who can't pull the trigger on a friend. You sound like you admire them. Same way I admire a virus or a thresher maw. They've adapted perfectly to their situation. But the Reapers want to destroy us. And I have no intention of letting them. But if you don't respect your enemy's capabilities, you're in for one nasty surprise after another. Poor Rila. But I'm glad she set off that bomb, Shepard. You're not upset the monastery was destroyed? No. 
Not after what I saw. I don't care that they were Ardat Yakshi. To be turned into such creatures, nobody deserves that. Do you ever feel awkward being the only Turian on the ship? I don't know. Should I? I just mean not having anyone else like you around. Mm, doesn't seem to bother Liara. But she can eat their food. Oh, hello, Commander. We were just uh, double checking the thermal ducts. I'm sure you were. Carry on. Yeah, they were just hugging. Yeah, hugging. That's what they were doing down here. Just just having a nice, uh, nice sort of uh, gonna wait until marriage hug. That's all they were doing. So that's all they could possibly have been doing. They couldn't possibly have been doing anything else. Get your mind out of the gutter, you filthy animals. <laughs> the next time you blow up a monastery, let me know you've left the premises, okay? I worry about you. Scuttlebutt says we're going to Thessia. I'll bet Doc's gonna want to go. I know I would if it was Earth. Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? That's just you, James. From Corin LeMays. Commander Shepard, as of an hour ago, Asari High Command has assigned my squad to support you. We will ride with the Second Fleet until it's time to deploy. If you'll allow me on a personal note, I knew a few of the commandos who went down to that monastery. Nothing will bring them back, but hearing that that place went up in smoke is the only good news I've heard in weeks. Ready to serve Captain Corin LeMays. LeMays. Headed for the front line, Samara. Shepard, I finished my business on Lessus. I would offer to travel once again with you on the Normandy, but the code dictates I join the fight where it is most dire. While you do your essential work, I will do my best to help hold the front. Before I depart, I'll return to the Citadel for a short time to prepare. If it does not interfere with your duties, come find me there. Yeah, you know, I was about to end the episode, but let's go to the Citadel. Let's finish that up. So poor Anna doesn't have to deal with it at the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> I found a Prothean sphere on Gay Hinnom. Contact the Alliance and tell them Commander Shepard asked. Yes, thank you. I'll call them right now. I hoped you'd come. I won't remain here much longer. What are you doing on the Citadel, Samara? I suppose I came to say goodbye. Falaire is safe, and Rila is at rest. I felt the need to speak to you before heading to battle. I want you to know there is no one else I'd rather see leading us in our last hours. These aren't our last hours. I'm fighting this war to win it. No doubt, but you can't deny that the galaxy will be forever changed once it ends. Even I can predict how. A little humbling. But perhaps that's a good thing. What are the other Justicars doing for the war? Most have made it home. They will attempt to hold Thessia. With the odds we face, it's possible our order will no longer exist after this war. There's that few of you? Our numbers were never great. We must prepare to sacrifice ourselves. If that is what's required. Was being a Justicar worth it if that's how it all ends? The Justicars were formed to bring order to a world that laughs at the notion. The role is solitary. Its demands are lonely and uncompromising, often to the point of pain. But following the code left me with no regrets. Take that for what you will. You know, I never asked you if your code has anything useful on fighting Reapers. Treat them as any other enemy. Show no quarter, mercy, or weakness. The only difference is the scale of our foe. The code is too strict to account for such... small discrepancies. Is that how you see it too? An odd question. Coming from the Spectre who killed her third Reaper on Rannoch. <laughs> Fair point. Will Falaire be all right in the monastery? Or what's left of it? We spoke for some time. It won't be easy. But if there is a way to survive, Falaire will find it. It was... good to see her again. 
Perhaps it's unseemly for a Jessica to dwell so much on her family. I'm just happy things worked out. I was fortunate that Falaer saw things so clearly. And it would have turned out quite differently without your intervention. Thank you. Good luck out there, Samara. You as well. I don't know if you believe in such things. But Goddess, go with you, Shepard. We'll both be tested in fire, soon enough. Refugee camps. Urgently. Human, I must speak to you on behalf of my people. What is it? Holding sorrow. Takuna. My home world. The Reapers have come. Holding sorrow. Our warriors are under siege. But your forces can rescue them. Urgently. Please. All the other races have turned us aside. How do your people fight? Proudly. With BI-assisted infantry. Our soldiers carry heavy weapons into battle mounted on their backs. Mixed pride and shame. Our enemies have called us living tanks, as well as names less flattering. I'll take the Normandy as soon as we have time. Relief. Thank you, Commander. Small hope. Perhaps we can evacuate some of our civilians when your forces arrive. Anxiously, I will remain here for news. Please hurry. Takuna burns. Guess we have a new mission. The prisoners were indoctrinated. You think? And once the alarm was sounded? Naira's eyes were black. The whole time, not just for a second. I could feel her mind from where I was standing. The humans were in the way, attacking us. I used my biotics. Flung them around. I... I'd been horrified when Naira tore the farmers apart, but goddess, I ripped them in half. And it felt good. There's nothing shameful about feeling an adrenaline rush during battle. I might have killed more than Naira and those husks did. She wanted them alive, to turn them. And I... And you survived. Her name is Tasha Pore. Of course. P Weshra? I have an audio log for you. For me? Where did this come? Oh no. Oh, Tasha. Thank you for bringing this back. At least I know what happened. Okay. Uh. You know, I don't want to do it at the start of the next episode, so let's just go do the mission for the Elcor right now. Get it done. Distress calls, distress calls. Oh, I just have to recover the flotilla. Okay, fair enough. I thought that was, uh, I thought for sure that was a ground mission. Cleared to dock, no. I'll handle it. Yes, Commander. We tried to run again, but we were blocked. And the farm girl? Her leg was broken, bleeding bad. I knocked down a wall in a barn with a big warp field. I was so proud of that. And we hid. They must have searched for you. I'm an Asari huntress. No damn husk is gonna find me unless I let it. But the farm girl who was with you? Her leg was broken. She was whimpering, and in the eye ride, I saw her through a hole in the boards. She was coming closer with those dead black eyes. And Hillary, the farm girl, she couldn't stop crying. They were going to hear. What did you do? What do you think? Oh, boy. Yeah. Now arriving at anyway, hey, I went to shot and probe at a, pla at a planet, and then I saved all your people, so everything's cool now. We got your people off to Kuna, Ambassador. Utterly sincere. 
Thank you for your assistance, Commander. This is not a debt we can repay. Were you able to evacuate any civilians? Yes. How many? Not enough. Yeah, not enough. That sounds about right. And that, finally, here, now, <laughs> makes for a good stopping point for the episode, I think. So, if you have enjoyed hanging out in the world of Mass Effect 3 with me, please hit the like, comment, and or subscribe buttons down below. That helps the channel out. You can become a member of the channel to get access to these episodes early before they go live for anyone else. You can head on over to Twitch to watch me when I stream video games, which usually these days is Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, maybe also some other games occasionally. And yeah, I think that's all the self-promotion I have to do. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to be kind to one another. Have solidarity with those who are worse off than yourselves. And may the tides of history wash gently over us all. <laughs>